price inflation right now is already affecting your real wages. If you had an increase in the last year of less than about 4% on your salary, then you have lost ground because inflation is firing up and your real wages are less than they were. Next year, we could have 10% inflation. And if you're stuck in a contract which only allows you 2 or 3% increase, you could be having less money, it feels like more money, but actually less money due to inflation. And of course that drives stress and anger. Now, I pause before I say this one because I want to make sure to um, highlight that this is the worst case scenario. There are a whole bunch of books, videos, and websites. What is the worst case scenario? Well, imagine this for a moment. First of all, imagine there was no more petroleum in Michigan. Gasoline, oil, natural gas, fuel oil. Imagine we were priced out of the market. Okay? Maybe not it didn't run out, but we were just priced out of the market. The U.S. couldn't buy it anymore. Imagine no more automobiles. Imagine they all vanished. All vehicles, all automobiles. Anything that has an internal combustion engine using gasoline or diesel. Imagine the economy where no one has a job to go to because there's no way to get there and nothing to do once they get there. What is the worth of money? What is money worth then? Money, even if you had a bunch, probably is worth nothing. That's basically hyperinflation. Imagine the difficulty in getting coal to the coal-fired power plants if you couldn't dig it out of the earth using your oil-powered machines. No electricity, except for maybe our couple of nuclear power plants. No more health care or sanitation. How are health care and sanitation, how's that system going to function if there's no energy or oil to be driving it? Winter heating. How are we going to stay warm in the, heat in the winter? No more food. How are we going to grow food if we don't have industrial agriculture? How are we going to get it from California and from Venezuela and from all those places where we import huge amounts of food? No more water. Luckily in Michigan we are blessed with water, but not everyone is lucky enough to live next to a lake or a stream or one of the Great Lakes. And the last and most devastating worst case scenario is the loss of security. What would happen if we no longer felt safe from other people, from ourselves even? So that's the worst case scenario. And the reason I bring that up is I don't want to gloss over the fact that these are the things that are being written about. Are they going to happen? Don't know for sure. Is oil reaching its peak and going down? Yes. Is it having a huge impact? Yes. Is this the ultimate possible impact? Yes. Is it going to happen? Who knows? Hopefully not. Hopefully we can work together to avoid that. Why is the impact so huge? I think we've went over that. Oil is the very best energy source we've ever found. Humans started using their muscles. They started burning wood. They started um, using animal traction to make food. They started using slaves and then thankfully stopped using slaves. They started using water, hydroelectric, wind to move ships. Then they found coal, they started burning coal, a huge jump in industry and population when we found coal. And then oil has just driven humanity to this huge consumption level that we're at now. Oil is available in gargantuan quantities. It's very, very easy to transport, not like liquefied natural gas or nuclear. Oil can be refined into hundreds of thousands of products. It's used in every part of our life. Everybody wants it, and we don't have that much left of our own in the United States or in Michigan for that reason. Exactly what is the problem? It's not that we're getting to peak oil. I mean, peak oil is a problem, but what really is the problem? The problem really is that we, every single one of us, are dependent on an unsustainable, failed global system providing for all of our needs, providing food, energy, shelter, all these things. And this system is failing because it is based entirely on huge quantities and ever-growing quantities of oil. That is the problem. The problem is that we are dependent on the system. The second part of this problem is that every single penny we use, every single dollar we, we earn or, or spend, that is driving this system. And it's driving it faster and faster. And so the only way really to end this system is to stop doing that. But how do you do that without having a huge recession or a huge depression? We don't know how else to live without this system. How do you live without the global economy? How do you live without oil? We don't know how to do that. We don't have a backup system. <laughs> we don't have a plan B. 
So the problem isn't necessarily that we're getting to peak oil. The problem is that we're dependent on this system, this global economy, which has no future, at least not in its present form. So what are the solutions then? What are the solutions to being dependent on an unsustainable system? First of all, the first thing we've got to do is plug those leaks. We need to be spending less, much less money on oil and other energy resources that are coming from out of state into our state, out, from out of our nation into our nation. Second of all, we need to start thinking about what do we want the future economy to be for, the, for Grand Rapids, for Michigan, for the United States, for the world. That new economy needs to be able to provide for all the needs that we need to have provided. Um, new systems that are designed to be compassionate, sustainable, and local. Those are the three key words. We need compassionate, a compassionate economy that is sustainable and is local. Mary, Mayor Hartwell talked about the sustainability factor. Well, that's not the only part of it. We need a compassionate system and a local system so that we're taking care of our own needs. What things should we be providing locally? Well, what things would you be unhappy if the global economy wasn't able to provide it for you? What things would you really want provided for you by our system, for, by our economy? First of all, we need security. Local economy, we need to have a police force or whatever, we need to have security. We need to have a water supply. Luckily in Michigan, that shouldn't be a big hurdle. We need a local food supply. We should have local food systems where we can go to the supermarket and we can buy all Michigan-grown food all year long. Whether it's, it's put up as storage or whatever, we should be able to buy Michigan food, Grand Rapids food. We should be able to provide for our own heating, heating needs through solar, through, through um, geothermal, through whatever needs we need to provide heat. We need to be able to provide for our own health care and sanitation. We should be providing our own electricity through um, PV panels and through uh, micro hydro and through um, wind turbines. We should be providing that for ourselves. We shouldn't be importing hundreds and thousands and millions of tons of coal from Wyoming, which means we're sending all that money to Wyoming, helping their education system, I might, might add. Uh, they, uh, the teachers in Wyoming last year, every single one of them got a $4,000 raise because their economy and their tax structure is based on their export of energy. Um, we shouldn't be sending huge amounts of money to West Virginia to dig strip mines to pull the coal out so we can bring it to our two coal fire power plants on Lake Michigan, turning these lights on every single day. We should have our own energy system here in Michigan. Grand Rapids should be independent. If energy grid goes out, Grand Rapids and every city should still be able to provide their own power. Transportation. We should be able to provide our own transportation without gasoline, um, with a limited amount of ethanol that is feasible to actually grow in Michigan while still having food to eat. Um, we need to provide for local jobs. We need local money, which is a very interesting concept. This is called a local currency or a local script. Ithaca in New York is doing this, and you can go to a store and you can pay some with U.S. dollars and some with Ithaca dollars. And those Ithaca dollars only stay in Ithaca. That money stays in the local economy. And the transition is going from the U.S. dollars to the Ithaca dollars. We need to provide for our local social and spiritual needs. Maybe that's a national issue, but I think that's a local issue. So how do you, we begin? Lots of ways. Uh, we need to start, of course, with ourselves. We need to conserve, consume much less. Less energy, less resources. We need to conserve much, much more. We need to grow and buy our local food. We need to support other people in their uh, process of doing this. We need to get out of debt because if the U.S. economy fails, if we have a stock market crash, and we know there's always a stock market crash somewhere in the future. We don't know when it's going to happen, but we know it's there. Um, if we have a, a recession or a severe depression, then we need not to be in debt, especially with the new bankruptcy laws. We need to make ourselves as independent as we individually can be and then work with community to make our communities as independent as they can be. We need to collaborate. I invite you to join this effort. The Local Future Network is the network that I produced, uh, created just for this purpose. We only have one planet Earth. We need to develop sustainable, compassionate, local systems that allow us to continue living and surviving on this earth while protecting it for future generations.
Thank you.